Okay, so any questions on anything? Could you say a little bit about how you determine timing for a quiz? Because this is something that I've... <laughs> I seem to be overly optimistic about how long it takes people to do a quiz online. Yeah, so... I can tell you how long it takes. I have records on there of how long it took them to do those surveys. It took those surveys, it took them less than a minute and a half. Okay, so the online thing seems to be much faster than a paper one or something like that, depending on what your questions are. Okay, so if you have something where they have to calculate something, it takes them forever to do that. Or if you have something where they have to type in a short answer, essay sort of thing, it takes them forever to do that. Um, but if it's multiple choice sort of things, they tend to go through those fairly quickly. I think it depends on whether this is worth a lot of points or just a few points or no points, you know, how quickly they do it. So I can't answer you directly, <laughs> okay? But what I do find is the survey is very quick. So I'm, you know, maybe that's because it doesn't really count a whole lot other than completing it. Um, still, I have problems with people not doing it, not following my instructions because it's an online thing where you see the first lab, before you come to lab the first week, you have to take this. It takes me through to two weeks before I get everybody to complete it. And I end up having to send out messages to people you haven't done this. But you know, I found that, so Cam, this was the first semester we used Canvas in the fall. The first um, course in my department. And some of my students had used it before, but most had never used it. So there was always this issue of getting used to it at the very beginning. But by the time we were in week four, they were pretty well set to it. The biggest thing, I do use a lot of groups and the collaboration issues and things like that. My problem was that they wouldn't enter in their UW email in that and they would be connecting through their Google account, some other Gmail account or something else like that and then it messed them up the rest of the semester. So you have to be strenuous that they have to use their UW email to connect because they have a Gmail account in there or a Google uh, what do you call that? Have a GC. What are you connected to? All the Google stuff? Uh, Google log. Right? No. Um, Google account. Yeah, Google. You have a Google. You have a, a Google account, and so that gives you access to all this stuff that they're using through the groups and things like that. But if they try to use their individual Gmail, then you get messed up through the rest of the semester. So I found that that was critical. And then it was hard to ever fix it. And we tried multiple times, and it was just really hard. So you just have to be strict at the beginning. But I think, you know, I think this quizzing option survey has a lot of potential for uses. Well, so what does the report look like? Where do you go to get um, somebody you want to see the summary of the survey? Yeah, so you go to the actual quiz. So. I'm going to go here. So here are my actual quizzes. Um, so the one that's published is Getting to Know You. I think you can see it over here. No, I'm going to go click on it here. Just click on it. And then up on the right hand side it says Survey Statistics. Okay? And so that's where it populates it with, for each question, it populates the responses in that one. Now, if you're doing it graded, you can go to the speed grader and look for each person, but you can also see the statistics on the overall response for each question, right or wrong, whatever you want there. It's worth knowing, too, that the stats button doesn't appear until there are actual responses to the survey, so if you're not seeing that button, it's because nobody's taken it yet. Yeah, I have no idea. Can students see those uh, stats? No. That's for me. At least I think so. Like I hope so. <laughs> You'd be surprised sometimes what they figure out how to do though. Have you ever tried adding any media as a font in the question? So not in the question, but I have had media added in other places. Okay. So um, and we linked in movies and we linked in links to Kaltura or something like that. What a fantastic segue 
to the back of your quiz machine. If you already have F created quizzes um, and you're like, oh, this is all so easy, I don't need to do this, I challenge you to turn it over and do the first two. Um, you can actually add media, you can add H5P content. So if you want interactivity or you want to do a heat map type question, um, you just put it in that survey or the, the quiz question thing and then ask a question of like, what was the result? And all what of your plane in that heat map. What is the heat map? Um, I'm using the wrong term, I think. The, uh, the image, where on the image is the logo? Click oh, on the logo. Oh, oh, yes. okay. What is it? Hotspot. Hotspot. Hot spot. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Different. <laughs> hey, I'm just like, I'm thinking of heat stress and ammo. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what in the world is this that you're talking about? So, um, but yeah. if, you have, if you have like an identification question of like, click on the, the cows, whatever. Yeah. You could do that, and I don't, I don't know if like Canvas standard quizzing tools don't let you do ask that question, but you could ask that question and um, be a, a H5P interactive element. H5P. You should take one of these home and check it out. It's awesome. Well, I would do it under HTML. That's how I would write it. It's all HTML compliant. Yeah. So I mean, that's how I would have created something like that. I would have put a picture in with the hotspot, something mm -hmm. like that. So I think you can make things a lot complicated, as complicated as you want. <laughs> More complicated than they should be, probably. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, keep in mind that we were just starting with canvas and we had to go from scratch on the thing. So I just found it was really helpful to use those um, instructor guides. They worked really well. And then when I couldn't answer a question, I just called the canvas people directly. And they always had somebody really helpful that would say, you know, no, here's your answer right away, or no, let me call you back in about 15 minutes and I'll find out what the answer is, and they call me back and they, because they, they handle most of the time, they say, oh yeah, 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 I just talked to somebody yesterday on that. And so they're talking to so many different people across the United States that they can handle just about everything you can think of. So quick question in the room, uh, what are your favorite, least favorite uh, things about cuisine, challenges you've had, little aha moments that you might have discovered, like, oh my gosh, I can use this for formative feedback, still give them credit for doing that, but keep it anonymous so that they feel safe asking me anything. That for saying, give me whatever feedback you want. Well, I know an issue that one of my instructors is running into is they cannot see where the quiz was taken. They're, you can't get the IP address, so you can't see if there's any cheating going on. Right. I, that's, I, when I saw that IP filtering, I was wondering if there were some options there that would say, like, that would show you where it was taken. From what I've been able to read so far, you have to ask the Canvas administrator to download a spreadsheet file that you then have to sort through. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about this, and I was thinking the way to control this is the time accessible to the thing. And so you don't announce, so if you're going to give this quiz in class, you don't announce the time that it is. And you know, it might be at random during class when you're giving it, and you make it available suddenly, and then they take the quiz, and then you close it. And so you don't have time outside. But you know, they still could be somebody on the outside. You know. One thing that I've found um, useful in trying to evaluate quizzes is that, um, you know, when someone has done poorly on a quiz, you have this view log feature mm -hmm. um, on a in, in window. You can, you can click on that and you can see how they took the exam, how long they took on each question. And more importantly, uh, the people who did poorly moved away from the question page. So they were going and look, trying to look things up on Wikipedia or something. It says they stopped taking the exam at this time, they resumed the exam at this time. It, and you, you, so you can see who's struggling, who's groping around for answers. Then the guys who are doing really well, it's just green lights the whole way. They just go straight through. Because that, that gives you the time that they took in as well, right? Yeah. So you can yeah. see, oh, these three people who got the question wrong spent the same time. They started the same question at the same time. They 
Yeah. Yeah. They finished in three minutes, and this person took ten minutes. Right. Yeah. But it also shows that they went away, like they the browser. Yeah, they switched browser. They 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 moved away from this page. Yeah. So they actually the strategy is to have two laptops open so that you don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Them. You just want to make it as hard as you can. <laughs> but, but, but yeah. Yeah. Don't share that with the students because yeah. I don't know. Well, we've I've already figured out the things. Yeah, so I've seen them. Yeah, I've seen them with the phone and the laptop both. So you know. But I guess my response to that is, in my daily work life, I look up stuff too. I don't have everything I need memorized. You cheat in life. You know. So what are we really teaching our students? You know, is it all about what they memorized, or is it the ability to find the information they need? They and that gets to your question, Charlie, I think about the uh, how much time do you give them for the quizzing? If it's like, if you're trying to teach them how to like work under stress very quickly and like memorize these things, then don't give them a lot of space. But if your goal is for them to answer the question and maybe stop, go look it up and yeah. come back to it, then yeah, whatever time is necessary for them to do that. I'm not sure memorize is the right word. I'm not sure I necessarily agree with that's the word to remember. Uh, to, to know it. And you yeah. know, it's the same thing. So, I mean, do something 10,000 times. Is it memorized or is it just? Yeah. Because yeah. you need to know them. But right. then if you're asking kinds of questions that um, create critical thinkers, you want them to be able to look stuff up based on what they already know and then be able to do more. Why can't they apply it from what they already know? Well, maybe they can, but it, with your daily life, there are probably things that you look up to so that you can make sure that you're doing it the best possible way. I mean, sure, there, you know, there are certain things that you learn and you just do. You don't have to look up everything that you do, but giving you no, space I, I understand to, what you're talking about. I just, I don't necessarily have the same fundamental agreement and what they should be doing, and that's just... I just think that there it's are different things for that, different disciplines, different yeah. classes, different instructors, different students. Yeah. No, I see the students doing this all the time. What annoys me the worst is I have them working on it in a group. They're making some presentation, making some outline of stuff on the blackboard, you know. And what I see them doing is looking up the answer to the question on their iPhone or whatever. That was not the idea. The idea was for the three or four of them to work together to solve this solution to the problem. And so, but anyway, I don't necessarily always need to know the correct answer. It's the process that a lot, yeah. really a lot of time is more important to you than the actual correct answer. So, but I understand. Sarah? I think, uh, another thing we didn't talk about um, much today is question banks. Um, no, I don't know how to do it. Yeah, so you can set up um, a bank of questions and then pull those onto your quiz, or you can randomly um, select questions from part of a bank as well. So um, that's a, a good thing to set up. And one of the things that we're seeing when we move uh, Moodle courses over into Canvas is that if your questions aren't named in very particular ways, it can be hard to find those later. So yeah. as you're creating questions, if you're going to keep moving forward with um, just adding continually to the questions you have. Really think hard about what the names of those questions are so that you can find them later and save yourself some time. Yeah, and I think that's just a, it's different ways of identifying things. I think it's just it's a good way. And that the students don't see the names, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but it, for finding them, yeah, um, it's important to do that. And it, it's a good habit, I guess, or strategy to, to think about, well, what is this question actually asking? So, you know, you can name it according to what the learning outcome is. Can you take a quiz and then tell it somehow to add those questions to a bank? Or do you have to start with the bank to then create the quiz? It puts your new questions in a folder called uncategorized. Okay. So it's easier to create them in the bank and then pull them into the quiz because then you don't have to recategorize things later. Okay. Uh, but it, it can work both ways. Okay. Quizzing is, and, and uh, at the very top of this, you'll see the little disclaimer that Canvas is redoing their whole quizzing tool.
So I think there are a lot of fundamental things that we can learn. The actual technical details may change. They may stay the same depending on what Canvas decides. Um, in the, I watched their video, it was from last summer, and they said this would be happening in 2016. Uh, 2016 came and went, and I don't think it's happened yet. Um, but if it comes in 2017, there's some pretty cool stuff, pretty cool things that are that are coming out of it. Um, yeah, um, so we'll find out what happens. Somebody mentioned last week: Does the mobile app work with this? The, ca the Canvas mobile app does work with Quizlet. Yes. Because it doesn't work with everything. It does not work with everything. No. What does it not work with? Uh, the Google uh, integration is one of the things that Canvas has said that if you'll read our fine print, <laughs> right. <laughs> that is not supported. Okay. All I know is I kept running across things and I gave up on my phone accessing it through that. I just access it through the website. So I use Safari on my phone and access it through there rather than try to access it through their app. Um, it was just inconsistent. Oh, and I didn't know where it was coming from. It is quarter two. That means that we're done. Um, please help me thank John for coming in. To the